Hey guys, welcome back to another season of this Manchester United save. Season 8 is here, episode 93. We're 32 major trophies into this save now, uh, which means, um, yeah, that's how much trophies we won within seven seasons. We want to add to the tally this year. In terms of the squad, in terms of the personnel, there were players that were running down their contract. There were senior members that we do love dearly, but we have to let them go. So... Without further ado, these are the players who were shown the door. Marcus Rashford ended up leaving for Bayern Munich for 147 million. He was also followed up by Anthony, who left for 121 million to Napoli. And Manu Kone left to Real Madrid for 107.5 million. So those are three spots which have opened up in the first team. Let's take a look at the squad that's left. So, what does Rashford, Anthony, and Manu Kone leaving mean for our entire squad? So, this is how we're pretty much looking like shaping up for the rest of the season. So Abbas will take that Anthony spot. Rashford was dilly-dallying on the bench, playing two roles, winger and striker. We just got Gallo for the wing role. Bernard is a good second-choice striker. We don't have to worry about uh, the quality dipping after we sub off Richie. Uh, Ruiz is going to take that spot for Manu Kone on that bench. Uh, we also have the likes of Constantin Hansen. We spoke about him last season towards the end he's gone up by over like two overalls or one overall sorry can't remember can't remember to be exact but um Hansen he's gonna be that uh third choice fourth choice winger I should say so we have Felix Abbas Gallo and then Constantin Hansen and uh the backup to Constantin is going to be David Smith whose overall is 73 age 19. Following up uh, with that Rashford scenario so um, our third choice striker is going to be Mario Marchetti uh, he's an Italian striker which we scouted through our youth academy a lot of these players that you see in the reserves a lot of the players that you're you're going to see featuring in the first team this season are going to be homegrown talents except for the likes of Crespo, Corbett and um, Ericsson and Ruiz but McHugh, Fuller, Gallo, uh, who else? Uh, Abbas Richie, there's many more players that came from the youth academy. So, yeah, it looks like um, the class of 28 is uh, in full effect. So, our new number seven is now revealed Abdel Wahab Abbas. Overall 87, 21 years of age, the Egyptian magician. Uh, he worked his wonders on the right wing last season. Even when he was just featuring here and there, uh, he did put up some decent numbers. Replacing Marcus Rashford as our number 10 is Dominic Sobozlai. We don't need to go into too much detail about this man's numbers. Very uh, crucial, very clinical, very consistent. And there have been some interesting loan moves that have gone through. So Diego Duarte, he's gone out on loan to sport in Lisbon for about two seasons. Hugh Hewitt's gone to Bournemouth uh, for a season. Ab Abu Ahmed's gone to Basakshir. I don't know if I said that correctly, that Turkish club. But yeah, uh, Papa's gone to Fulham, which is a decent move for him. Uh, we did take uh, Malasso off the transfer list. I feel like we can use Malasso and I don't feel like his playing time is going to be an issue because uh, McHugh and Malasso are definitely going to um, have a fair share of game time between each other this season. I was going to try to give Cabral more opportunities. We may look to move him on, on loan or permanently. Let's just see how things go for the rest of the episode. The same scenario ended up happening with Tommy Sheehan. We took him off the, the transfer list as we did get rid of uh, Jao Victor. Um, Jao Victor went to Atletico Madrid. I think we sold him for about 65 million or 70 million. Something crazy. Um, I can't remember the exact fee. So featuring in this episode should be a game against Liverpool, Olympic Lyonnais, Arsenal and AFC Bournemouth. So we have two Premier League games. Um, and then we have a, a Community Shield and the Super Cup. So in pre-season, we only slipped up once out of our three games. So we end up drawing 1-1 with Barcelona. Also beating Real Betis and Real Madrid uh, for the other games. Uh, I am quite concerned, quite concerned with the defending. Um, also, there was an update. So we have switched up the sliders again and lowered the difficulty. So I'll go into further detail as the episode goes on. Uh, but any slider changes that I have made, I will leave it in the comment section below. Like I said at the end of last season. But yeah, without further ado, let's head off into this game against Liverpool. Okay, the 2029-30 season is about to get underway. Manchester United versus Liverpool, last year's Premier League and FA Cup winners up against last year's Premier League challengers. Liverpool, they do now to give us a challenge. We have dropped the difficulty. I have said it numerous of times. Uh, we dropped it to legendary. Tweet the sliders a bit just to see 
how things will go. Hopefully they do give us a challenge. Um, when it comes to uh, the senior players that have left, it's going to be a lot of pressure on Abbas and Gallo. Can they handle the mantle being passed down to them? Let's find out. Okay, so the game's underway. We're attacking to the right. Liverpool are attacking to the left. Here we go. So, uh, like I said, we have tweaked the sliders a bit. Hopefully, this still proves to be a challenge. I'm expecting some end-to-end -end football against Liverpool. Antonio Silva. Alvarado. Suppose like switches playing to Shao Felix who takes it down on his chest quite well. Shao Felix with the right foot strike finds uh, the top left corner. Liverpool's Allison beaten from a, a nice angle. We picked a beautiful angle. Look at that one last look at that. Just flies into the top corner. Completely beaten. Some things just don't change. The best in the world has struck first. So Wembley Stadium's gone a bit quiet. 29 minutes gone. 1-0 up still. Liverpool not really causing much of a threat. Shall Phyllis in behind. Oh, how's he missed that? I should have squared it to Adele. What happened? Intercepts and gets the ball forward. Osman and Dembele. It's going to run through the centre. Thank God. Ooh, Corbett almost caught out by the trickery of Osman, eh? Well done, my back line. Alert to... I think... Uh, I don't even know what skill he did. <laughs> I just knew he was doing quick footwork. Here's Richie. Malassia. Returns it to Richie. Bellingham plays it to his right. Alvarado plays the ball into the box. Cleared up by Schust. Malassia gets ahead on that. Bellingham recovers the ball. Felix. Malassia, nice ball into the ball. There we go. Abdel will have a bass. Opens the score in our new number seven. Strikes for the first time while wearing that shirt. An incredible ball in to the box by the Dutchman on the left hand side. We made the right decisions to keep him. And this Felix lays it off into Malassia. Look at this ball. Beautiful. Look at the header as well. Ball goes in. Cleared away by Shao Felix. Vanessa on the edge of the box. Luis Diaz, Liverpool piling on some pressure now. Can we defend? Let's find out. Schuess plays a ball to the right-hand side. Osman and Dembele takes it down. Nice footwork from Dembele. There's a shot from Ishmael Benesir. It goes wide on the post. Former United CDM just on the stroke of half-time. Has squandered Liverpool's best opportunity as they go into the interval two goals down. So Luis Diaz puts the ball into the box. Odegaard with the header cleared off the line. I think that was Alvarado. Cleared up the pitch to Richie. Liverpool still come forward with the ball. Dembele tries to slip. I think that's a uh, Luis Diaz in behind. Interceptions made by a United defender. Up the other end, we can hit them on the break. Dominic Sabozlai like on the ball. Who's that on him? We don't know. Rabona into the centre. There's a bit of a mess in the penalty area, but Liverpool finally get the ball cleared. Shao Felix said finally, but. It's not coming to fruition as it's back in danger. Let's go. Let's go. Let's keep trying. Bellingham. Alvarado. 56 minutes on the clock. Liverpool have been piling pressure on us. It's our turn now. Felix. Nice interchanges of passes here. Alvarado. Bellingham. Suppose like on edge of the box with a long shot. Allison makes the save. Oh, we're back at it again. So Bozai slips a bass in through on goal. He takes the shot. Allison makes a magnificent save. Uh, the Egyptian magician was about to strike again, but now he's off. Hansen's replacing him. Bernard's also replacing Richie. Calderon is also on for Ericsson. So that's three changes in total. For this corner kick. So Bozai, ball played into the centre, cleared away by Dembele. Calderon can retrieve the loose ball. No options. Fellas, where are you at? Silva. Bernard comes deep. Drops deep. Love that from Bernard. One of my favourite things about him. Oh, ran the ball off the pitch like some numpty. Luis Diaz. Ball burst into space. It's very quick. Diaz. One on one with Silva. There's back up again for United's defence. And uh, 
Diaz was isolated all by himself. He made the wrong decision in the end. Hansen. Bernard back into Hansen. The Dane running down this right hand side. He cuts it back into the box. No, it's not. It is. Malassia shoots across. Oh my goodness me. We need to make one of these count. Three goal leads weren't safe. Two goal leads are definitely not safe for us. Referee, man. That was a bit physical there. That was a bit physical, ref. Martin Odegaard. Again, going at it with the United defence. Plays it into Benesir. Liverpool midway through the United half. Battle for possession. Oh, we keep winning the ball back and giving it right up. We was destined to concede there. We were destined to concede. Martin Odegaard uh, halves the deficit. The game is back on. And it's on Arnold. Ball over the top. Ball, ball into the centre. Antonio Silva deals with that. Three minutes remaining. But Ruiz caught in possession. Not a position we want to be in at the minute. Liverpool have the numbers. The Cooper ball into the box. Nice save there by Fuller. Crucial save as Darwin Nunez flosses lines there. I don't think he made good contact. Up the other end, we look to hit them on the break. So Bozlai slips in. Bernard. Bernard goes around the keeper. Bernard puts the game to bed. Elias Bernard makes it 3-1 to Manchester United. And that there is the end to the curtain razor. Liverpool, there's no comeback for you guys. Go back to the change room. This is forever our extended stadium. Look at this ball in behind by Sabos Live. Just round the goalkeeper of Elias Bernard. Uh, coolly finished as well. He wasn't this composed last season. So we got the community shield over the line. We have the UEFA Super Cup next against Olympic Leone. Big win. Big, big win. And uh, it was a wonderful way to start this episode. A big victory against our historical rivals, Liverpool. Dominic Sabo's life, excellent performance, I must say. Um, he's looking really good with that number 10 shirt on his back. Definitely suits him. He's been our number 10 um, since we signed him, to be fair. He was a good replacement for, for Bruno Fernandes. Bellingham nailed down to another four-year contract. No, let's just, let's just leave it. He wants to be humble. Leave him to be humble. <laughs> he, he can't be complaining later on down the line about his wages. There we go. Tommy Sheehan, signed, sealed, delivered, an extra three-year contract, 69k per week. Okay, so we have some decisions to make. We have Ruben Barber. He's got a loan offer from Sampdoria. At the minute, he doesn't look like he's going to get first-team football, but if there was an injury to the first team, we'll be in um, deep trouble. Uh, I am going to entertain it. I don't want to hold this guy down. Uh, I feel like he can uh, flourish some more with another low move and looks like he's got two italian sides after him he must be some uh some sort of talent um so yeah 75 rated 20 years of age napoli and sampdoria are in for him despite the mistakes at the back against liverpool for their uh for their only goal in that last game i am very confident that we'll be able to shut olympic leone out in terms of the sliders i feel like um the ai is creating enough opportunities it feels a bit end-to-end -end. it's a tussle for possession we're not scoring too easily but if, um, if it does get too easy along the way during the course of the season we'll probably up it back to ultimate and find a way to slow the game down a bit more but um, yeah, everything seems A-OK. -okay. Let's get the second match on the way and uh, let's see if we can bring more more silverware to uh, to the OT. The, this will be the 34th major trophy. Uh, we're going to keep count. We're going to keep count. The nine-time European champions have arrived at the Stadion Europa Stadium. We're going to be playing against Olympic Leone, who are last year's Europa League winners. Uh, this is going to be a massive encounter. Uh, I I can confirm the Ronaldo region is playing for this team. So defensively, we need to be sound, keep an eye out for him and uh, see what dangers or threats he could cause. Let's take a look at the starting 11s from both sides. Starting in goal is Joan Crespo. We have Euron Timber at the back of Lacroix, Corbett and McHugh. In our midfield, we have Lissandro Martinez, Bellingham and Sabozlai. Down the left-hand side, we're playing with Shao Felix. Our number nine is Richie. On the right, we have Abbas. Olympic Leone, they will have Reese in goal at the back. They will have Ramsey, Gabriel, Simikon, Jansen and Wagner. In their midfield, they have Mancoliola, Bentancourt and Lefi. Uh, up top, they have Costa and Hoyland. They have Rasmus Hoyland. Some strike force they have at the moment. Okay, imagine that. They've got Man United's future star forward and uh, Ronaldo. <laughs> 
Ronaldo's region. <laughs> Shout out Felix into Bellingham. Going to go attacking now. Get some bodies committing forward. Abbas. Timber. Back into Abbas. On. Get things shaken now. Felix. Right foot strike. Over the bar it goes. Very wide. Not on target. Martinez. There's the Croy. Gonna switch that play into McCute. Play it back to the other side. Early cross into the box. Suppose I can't get to it. Uh, we're trying different ways to break down Leone. It's not working. 0 0 is the scoreline going into the interval. We need to improve in the second half. Moncayola. Oh, plays a ball in behind. Who's that? Jan Jansen. Jansen has Hoyland. Jansen, is he going to go alone? We don't know what he's going to do. Cuts it back. Mancayola, Lafitte, into Costa with the shot. Crespo makes the save. I think, I think Costa needed to add more power, but he wasn't facing the goal. Kind of swiveled round and took a shot. There was no oomph behind that. Nice ball down this right-hand side. We've got Douglas Ritchie. Who cuts it back? Timber. Timber. Felix makes it 1 0. You're in Timber with a simple pass into Felix. Puts his foot for it. And uh, the keeper was well beaten. Nasildo Reese should have done much better there. I know it was coming at him at a really fast pace out of nowhere, but he had a clear sight of the shot. And this just hit right at him with a lot of pace. It's a thunderbolt into the back of the net. Look at the keeper's reactions. Sh should have done much better. I was correct. Defeat. To Costa. Gobert wins the ball back. Time to start playing some nice football now. Let's go. We're 1-0 up. Why not? Abbas. Mendes. To Timber. Richie. Back into Abbas. Abbas with the left foot strike. 2 0. We made that look way too easy. Olympic Kaylee and Nate. I feel like uh, their confidence has been hit by that first goal. Because uh, nobody looked like they wanted to press. Nobody looked like they wanted to put their body on the line to make the block. Costa. Failure to take their chances. May prove to be costly. Lafitte. Rasmus Hoyland. Wagner. Mancayola, well done the nice challenge from the Croix. Costa tries to wiggle his way into the box. Corbett says no. Strong challenge from Joseph Corbett. Got Douglas Ritchie trying to get the ball out of his feet. Finds Shao Felix. Felix finds Douglas Ritchie down the center. Oh no, Simic can call up to me. I think I took too long to get the shot off. Match is about to die out now. <laughs> Been a rather boring end to this match. It did become action patched in the middle of the second half, but slowed down in the final quarter of it. I think once Leone went two goals down, the bite and the fight uh, just uh, slowly, slowly eased its way out of them. So Barcola traveling down this right hand side. It's going to be the last attack, then it's going to be the final whistle. Here we go again. Okay, so we bagged the victory in another curtain raise up. Fifth time winning the Super Cup. Uh, fifth time heading onto the podium. I'll say it's been a good performance. Again, um, lacking that cutting edge in front of goal, but I think it's just a lack of sharpness. Uh, there's certain players that have come from the fringes that didn't get a lot of game time in pre-season. So hopefully um, this is just a start to something good. Uh, I normally get it right towards the end of the season. Even though I haven't brought anyone in, even though we have weakened the squad, please trust the process. These players, they're ready to win more silverware, as you can see. Yeah, when you don't make transfers of your own, other transfers become even more intriguing. As you guys can see, a lot of movement around Europe. Uh, Mohamedou Lowe, that guy that was looking at last season, he's gone to Atletico Madrid. Gallagher's gone to PSG. Very interesting. Mason Mount has left Leeds United, gone to Atletico Madrid as well. Hakimi's left Manchester City, gone to Stavra and Ney. Tapsoba's left West Ham, gone to Real Madrid. That's an upgrade. Kavat Shelia, 
He's now joined the Premier League. He's going to be uh, annoying us playing for Chelsea. Lafont joined Real Madrid. I did notice Lafont in preseason. Uh, quite interesting. Declan Rice has jumped ship to, to Manchester City from Spurs. So a lot of uh, interesting moves in the Premier League. Uh, hopefully, it's going to be even more challenging. I am up for a challenge this year. Uh, definitely still believe that the class of 28 will get over the line. So we got uh, both offers in now. We're going to go ahead and accept both offers for Barbot. Um, hopefully, if he does go out on loan, he does uh, turn into a gem. I'm not too sure if we will uh, stick around to see whether he will become a gem or not. So last season, we managed to clinch the league title in April. Can we do the exact same thing this year? If anything, we do always look to beat um, what we did the season before that. So if we can clinch it in March, whether it's realistic or not, we are going to be up for that challenge. The first match of the season is going to be a tough one. Man United versus Arsenal. Arsenal have definitely fallen down the pecking order in recent seasons in my save. Last year, I think they just about finished in the top half of the table. We did beat them in uh, both games, in both head-to-heads in the Premier League. So I, I expect to start off with a flying start this year. Just a casual visit to the Emirates. This encounter is no longer as intimidating as it used to be. But nonetheless, we've got to play what's ahead of us. Manchester United versus Arsenal. We get the Premier League campaign underway. Seven-time Premier League champions. Hopefully, we can make it eight in a row. I know we're turning this league into a farmer's league. I bet Bayern Munich and PSG will be proud. Let's take a look at the starting 11s. Starting for Arsenal, they will have Karl Hein in goal. At the back, they have Sergino Dest, Schust, uh, Lukeba, and their left back and didn't quite catch that. Guendouzi's in the midfield with the young. Saka's playing off the right-hand side. Tim is their number 10. Off the left-hand side, they'll be using Kovacic. Pietis is their number nine. Aining is their left back. So, we are going to be responding with John Crespo and goal. Jiren Tim is at the battle of Lacroix, Corbett and Malasia. In our midfielder, Martinez, Mendes and Bellingham. Abbas is playing off the right. Richie's playing as the number nine. Off the left, we are Shao Felix. Mendes is in for Sabozlai as he's still carrying that knock. They're attacking to the right. And uh, I am expecting some champagne football. We're going to try to play them off the park and pop them. We've... Uh, Seen the likes of Abbas get off to a flying start in this episode. Uh, Bernard, he's played well, but we're still continuing with Richie despite him not scoring a goal just yet. Timba crosses that in. It's not a nice cross. Shoes deals with that. He just joined from Liverpool as well, Shoes. So his, this is his debut as well for Arsenal. It's just uh, mentioned it just now, player debut. We've got Tony Mendes, Dinks over the top. Oh, Richie takes a shot. Oh, Carl Hines should do way better than that. Douglas Richie opens the scoring at the Emirates. What a wonderful way to kick his campaign off with an early goal. It's a simple ball over the top of Lakeba's head. Doesn't do well positionally, has to track back. And uh, he's just looking at the ball while it's mid-air. Meanwhile, Richie, he knows where the ball's going to drop. He takes his time, picks his corner. And Gives us the lead. So Frank De Jong over this set piece for Arsenal. Puts the ball into the box. Abbas gets it cleared at that near post. Shao Felix is there. Spearhead in the counter-attack. No one's really getting near him. Richie back into Felix. We have this ball inside the penalty area of Arsenal. We cut it back into Mendes who takes the shot. He's fluffed his lines there. My shooting's on semi by the way. Semi assisted. So uh, if I don't get the angle right, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> Timber into Tony Mendes. <sighs> Peters with a strong challenge on Tony Mendes. He's still down. Hopefully that's not too serious. Quinton Timber gives the ball up. Bellingham into Richie and the uh, play is going to stop. Tony Mendes is out with an injury again. Uh, hopefully... It's not going to be longer than a month or two. So Gallo, he's making his way on for the injured Tony Mendes. We're going to be shifting Shao Felix into the number 10 role. And uh, Gallo's going to take his position down that left-hand side. The drop ball has uh, reset the play. 23 minutes gone with one nil up currently. Come on, Corbett. I was aiming to the right. To Timber. It's Quinton Timber. Peters. Oh, Arsenal equalise. The poor pass out from the back. 
by Corbett. And uh, they've made us pay. Uh, I feel like uh, just a stoppage of play has definitely kind of uh, shifted the momentum a bit. Arsenal have taken full advantage. Sandro Martinez. Felix. Abbas. Puts the ball into the centre. Cleared away by Dest. Bellingham heads it down. Gallo, right foot strike. Hits the crossbar. Oh, my days. Came so close just then. Uh, let's aim for the top corner. Carl Hine looked beaten. Just couldn't get in between the sticks. LaCroix. Gallo takes it down perfectly. Oh, referee, speak to them. They already had one player stretched off. They're trying to have another. But Kyle Saka needs a yellow card after that challenge. Come on, referee. Wonderful job. Wonderful job he's doing. Uh, yellow card. Who played over the top. Quinton Timber got the assist for the equaliser. LaCroix is there with the interception. Guendouzi does exactly the same. And LaCroix back-to-back -back interceptions made. Just really sloppy at the back. Can't get real control of possession. Arsenal eventually get a shot off again. And uh, Timber's denied by Crespo. Timber. Nice interception again by LaCroix. Gallo. Turns well. Is a square pass into Felix, who finds Gallo again, running down his left hand side, plays it into Richie on the inside. Richie front goal. Uh, I need to get used to semi assisted because <laughs> that there was terrible. <laughs> Tackled off the ball. Gallo combining with Richie, going back and forth with possession. That's on me with a backup from Saka. Two minutes added on. Have a switch to play by Jude Bellingham. Abbas. Oh, come on. That ball on the inside needs to be much better, much sharper. Bellingham tussling with Timber for possession. We have Douglas Ritchie. One last attack before we head off into the interval. Abbas. Oh, Shao Felix with a poor shot on the edge of the box. Karhain easy deals with that. Referee, you can't blow the whistle there, surely. 1-1 one, one is the scoreline as we head off into the interval. The referee prematurely blows the whistle. I'm uh, quite disappointed with that first half performance, especially the way we conceded that equaliser. So at the moment, our XG is superior to Arsenal's 1.2 to their 0.7, with a 63% possession to their 37. I feel like uh, we are in control of the game. We just need to put the game to bed with the chances that we are getting. Again, I am getting used to semi-assisted, uh, but that's no excuse. As you can see, we are dominating possession all over the park, whether it's out wide or in the central areas. Come on, Richie. Get the ball out of your feet. We are struggling right now. Oh, ball played forward. Kovacic right in front. Goal. Hits the post. Kovacic will be punching the air right now. Mikel Teta send that man home after that finish there. Really shocking. Needed a composed figure in front of goal. And he wasn't that. Up the other end. Abbas cuts it back. Shao Felix with a really hard first touch and that. Uh, the attack is broken down. Not yet, though, actually. Gallo. Oh, Gallo. In the back pocket of death so far in this game. To Timber. Bass turns. Bass can turn. Runs out the defence. Plays the ball into the centre. Cleared up by Schust. Victor Schust. It's been quite solid for Arsenal so far in this game. Richie can turn on his left foot. Oh, wide on the left-hand post. Okay, we're making two substitutions. Richie and Malassia are being replaced by Bernard and McHugh. Look like they're growing in confidence in this game. Need to put that to bed. That's doing a lot of uh, skills, Arsenal. Having fun with us out there on the pitch. Quinton Timber. Madonna, Corbett shuts him out. Come on, let's get the ball up the pitch a lot faster. Oh, ball over the top. Come on. He's onside, referee. Be quiet. Be quiet. He's onside, man. He's onside. Ah, uh, he's offside. <laughs> we played out the pitch. Well done, LaCroix. Heads it down. Bellingham. Best touch from Gallo. Port. Guendouzi. Frankie De Jong. Weston McKenney. Peters. 
Ooh, ooh, played through into Western McKenney is 1-0 to Arsenal. Oh my goodness me, we have gone down by, by a goal. <laughs> I'm astonished. I am astonished. Arsenal have found a way to take the lead. And it's the super sub himself, the American. I don't know what he is in the save anymore. Sometimes he's a striker. Sometimes he's box to box. Right now he's a left winger. And uh, he's just put the ball into the back of our net. Uh, the Arsenal fans are lapping up at the minute. This is not the way we envisioned this match going. We need to respond a lot faster. Then we have that equaliser. Feels like it was almost a century ag ago and now they've gone and taken the lead close to the dire moments of the match. We need something to wake these guys up at the minute. Our XG was higher than theirs. You guys saw it. Somewhere along the line. It got lost in translation. But no. Oh my goodness me. Just needed an extra lift. Go on, Gallo. We need more energy down this left-hand side. It's been poor from him. I know his uh, sharpness has been low going into this the campaign. But this is not the way to show that you can handle the pressure. Being one of the main characters in the dressing room. I know he's still young, 23 years of age, but it's been a poor game from him. Go, Gallo. McCube bombing down this left hand side. McCube cuts it back. Shao Felix, 2 2. 2 2. In the dire moments, we found the equalizer. We've not looked like a good side in the second half. Uh, Arsenal will probably feel hard done by because they look like they did enough, but we kept coming and kept plugging away. Uh, let's take the ball to the halfway line. Maybe we could get grab a winner. Look how much it means to Crespo. Abbas. Felix in the center. Felix. Oh, my goodness me. We have messed up. Oh, I need to get used to the semi-assisted. Semi I really do. Unassisted. I feel like that would be 3-2, but it's not unassisted. And we have drawn 2-2 on the opening day. I'm sure the United fans are disappointed. I'm sure the Arsenal fans are ecstatic because that's the level that they're right now. Getting a draw against the uh, the eight times, seven times, sorry, league champions is almost like a victory for them. Oh, so unlucky, so unlucky. 59% possession to their 41. Expected goals 2.8 to 1.6. We've been very wasteful, guys. Very wasteful possession. We looked really good in possession again. But uh, shots off target, six. Shots on target, four, 11 altogether. So our shoot shooting boots were missing for this particular match. We are going to head back to the training ground and recap because that is not on. Let's take a look at some of the 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 player ratings. Sandro Martin, 7.7. .7. Felix put in a solid performance. Richie did well, got a goal, but he wasn't the top performer. So I feel like that goal carried him. Um, yeah, the rest of these guys... They're above average. Uh, I don't, so no one played badly. So over, overall, it was a good team performance. Just the result just didn't match it. Okay, so we didn't get hit with one of these injuries last season, but we've been hit now. Tony Mendes is out with an ACL, and uh, uh, lo and behold, it's seven months, the duration of the injury. Uh, we got an offer for Alvarado. We're going to block that. We don't want him to leave at all. Uh, but we need to evaluate and assess this number 10 role. We can move Shao Felix into that number 10 position, but he'll be uh, he'll be juggling that position with uh, him and Sobozlai, which gives Gallo more opportunities down the left-hand side, and we could probably uh, move Hansen into into the first team and like play more games in, uh, with the first team, and then David Smith could get more of a look in, in the EFL Cup. Or we could go right into the market and bring in a number 10. But uh, it just doesn't make sense for the overall happiness of the squad if we end up doing that. Because Martinez was happy to just be a, a rotational player because he's still quite young, 19 years of age. He is going to be a miss. He, he is a good player, I, I must say. But yeah, um, I feel like they did that on, pur on purpose, Arsenal. I feel like they did that on purpose. Oh, David Smith, I forgot we was doing this. So our cam situation may solve itself. I actually forgot. I honestly forgot. David Smith can be turned into a cam, which means Ibrahim Mann has more opportunities down the left-hand side. Ibrahim Mann's uh, 18 years of age is overall 68, if I'm correct. So yeah, let's transform David Smith into a cam and uh, see what we can uh, what we can do with this player. I feel like he can definitely 
become a problem in the center he just needs to work on his technical ability his vision needs to go up but this isn't a project that uh this isn't a project that we haven't um taken on before we definitely know how to shift players around in terms of uh the final third and uh, get them technically playing well technically up to par for that particular position so this is the number 10 we definitely needed for the opening day so Bozla is back and uh, I can't wait I can't wait to throw him on against Bournemouth Bournemouth they have three points to our one uh, we're currently sitting at sixth place they're fourth at the current moment in time only one game has been played so it's not that deep but I'm still taken aback by by the result if I'm honest with you let's head off into this match let's see uh, let's see let's, let's seal the victory get over the line Finishing boots needs to be on. Yeah, Richie, Bernard, please. Thank you. And uh, yeah, we'll cap the episode off. Uh, if we are going to make a signing, it's probably going to be a last minute.com one. It may turn out to be a number 10 because maybe, yeah, there's going to be a lack of creativity in this next game. Uh, I doubt we are going to sign anyone, but yeah. Okay, we're attacking to the right. Bournemouth are attacking to the left. Ruthless finishing. Ruthless finishing. In Richie, we trust. Let's go. Let's go. So, um, yeah, that seven-month injury was a bit steep, wasn't it? But we're good. We'll find a way to make things work in that position. Because uh, Mendes was the second best number 10 that we had. After him, I think it's uh, Johnson, Ronnie Johnson. Ooh, ball goes in. Cleared up by Carlson. Ronnie Johnson's overall is uh, 70 currently. It's a handball shot there. <sighs> Tackled on the edge of the box. Uh, Carrizo. Ooh, blitzes past uh, Corbett. Oh, does it again. Carrizo. You hear it? Carrizo. Andrich. Oh, come on, man. We're getting sucked in. We're getting sucked in. 1 0 to Bournemouth. 1-0 to Bournemouth. What has happened? What has happened to my squad? Carrizo just toyed around. It was given goals, given goals. Everyone just allowed him to walk through, walk past. Crespo's frustrated with his defenders. Oh, we need a reaction. We need a reaction right now. I am not happy at all. We need to respond as fast as possible. Trailing 1-0 to Bournemouth. Newly promoted side. Zima makes a nice challenge on the edge of his own penalty area. Bar. Nice footwork from Bar into Andrich. Here's a ball forward. Hugh Hewitt. Subin. Hewitt. Andrich. Lee Subin. Hewitt. Caught in possession. Well done, Lissandro Martinez. Let's go. Burst forward with the ball. Oh, Douglas Ritchie. Through on goal. Ritchie. Through on goal. 1-1 one, one it is. Draws a pass into Timber. He finds Douglas Ritchie. A long ball across the ground. And uh, Ritchie's pass is uh, cut out by the defence of Bournemouth. Svankara turns. Carrizo to Hewitt. Ball over the top. Svankara can run onto it. Svankara with the head up. Crespo denies him. I was really close to hitting the back of the net. Second half is underway. It's 1-1 currently. Goal from Carrizo. And then an equaliser from Richie. That's what makes the honours even in this match. Trafford is not as loud as uh, we'd we would want it to be. But who can blame the home crowd? As we put in a shocking performances so far. Ooh. Overlapping run from Bellingham. He runs in behind. Jude Bellingham's left foot shot goes wide on the post. Again, we're squandering chances. Can't afford to keep missing. Eventually, I feel like Bournemouth are going to make us pay. Bellingham turns. Bellingham thinks over the top. Oh, can't get the ball into Richie. Zima hacks the ball away. We're going to come right back, though. Support slight into Timber. Bass in the center. Bass plays it into Shao Felix. Shao Felix finds Richie. Richie finds the bottom left corner. It's 2 1. Oh, brilliant start to the second half. We kept plugging away. We finally found the back of the net. What a beautiful move that was for my players. 
Richie really precise with his finish. Well done, uh, Felix. He drops the shoulder. Richie turns, turns really well. Richie runs right through the middle. Douglas Richie on a hat trick. Douglas Richie makes it free. Bournemouth did get off to a flying star against us. I thought it was going to be one of them wacky episodes. It would have been the first time where we had back to back defeats. Well, not back to back defeats, uh, drop back to back points in the opening few games of the league campaign. And I wasn't ready to sit through that. We had to have a, a quick fire response. We responded very well in the second half. Andrich on the ball. You were the court in possession. Bournemouth trying to do too much. You think they're prime Barca. We're about to show them something different now. So Bozlai, we're about to hit them on the break. Abbas, Abbas through on goal. Abbas makes it four. What were Bournemouth thinking? What were they doing with the ball just then? The Egyptian magician has punished them. Sankara, but well done, Lacroix. Abbas plays it down the line. So Bozlai, the second half has completely flipped on its head. What's going on with their backline? They're not even racing back now. But no, what is going on? What is going on with their backline? They weren't racing back to try to stop that fifth goal. I think all hope is lost for Bournemouth now. It is. Suppose like just giving free range to just run through that centre back. Number 10 as well. Carlson and number 5. They need to be uh, sent back to the clubs that they were signed from. Lacroix. <laughs> To Timber is a nice ball into the center. Shao Phillips could take it down. Left foot strike, bottom left corner. It is oh, nice interception there by Corbett. Five minutes added on. We've got Sabozla traveling with the ball. Abbas Timber on the outside, on the right hand side, running forward, bursting into the box. Bernard makes it 7 1. Very easy. Bournemouth are just not getting back in time to try and stop that ball across the penalty area. There we have it, 7-1 on match day two is the scoreline at the end of this game. Bournemouth, they were shown something different. The first half, they came out all guns blazing. They took the lead. They looked like the better side, played us off the park for a hot minute or two. But once the second half got underway, a different side were fielded. Well, they came out onto the field. Douglas Ritchie bagged himself a hat trick. Uh, Felix, he joined in with the score and so did Abbas and Bernard. It is top performances all around. Top performances all around. Shao Felix gets man of the match for this game. A spectacular performance from the Portuguese international, Douglas Ritchie. Even though getting the even though he got the match ball, he only uh, ended the game on an 8.1. He lost quite a bit of possession. Five, um, lost possession five times, apparently. Uh, who lost the most amount of possession? I think five is the most in this match so far Corbett and Richie. in terms of uh, Bournemouth though Bournemouth's Vancara was a was a star man up top got himself an assist Carrizzo was the player with the goal um, definitely want to check out Car uh, oh his overall's only 68 that's a bit so we're bad. full of surprises right now Watford they've just accepted a 30 million bid for Cedric Perrin he's a 5 foot 5 number 10 he can play off the left he can play down the middle as a number 9 but his best position is uh, behind that striker. He's really quick. Uh, so his physical attributes stand up. Um, his passing ability is decent. Technical ability is quite decent. We can work upon. We can work on that as well. Stamina needs, needs working on 74. Uh, but he's, it says here his trait is second wind. So um, this is a good trait to have. Especially with the intensity that we have in our midfield. Like the, the, the type of tempo we play with. Um, in terms of the number 10 position, I want adequate cover. I know we have David Smith. We just converted him into a number 10. But Tony Mendes, he's going to be out for at least 70%, 60% plus uh, of, of the season. And suppose that he can't do it on his own. I know we can use Shao Felix as a number 10. But in my head, that's not our do ideal. I prefer him on the left, even though he, he's, he plays well in the middle. I prefer him on the left. I'd rather have someone that's a specialist in that particular position and Cedric Perrin he's supposed to be one and on top of that uh, I feel like because of his overall he's not going to demand too much playing time I feel like um, 120k per week should be enough to secure his signature uh, but we're going to start 100k per week let's see 
what he says if we can get this deal over the line in time okay so how my squad's gonna look now because uh um perrin is now here we're gonna have four four cams battling out this season once tony mendes comes back we're obviously gonna try to loan out um johnson or david smith in the middle of january but for now we're gonna need the likes of david smith as a backup number 10 but yeah perrin's gonna be helping sabozai out with that role and uh, hopefully we're not going to have a dilemma where he's going to be complaining about game time within a couple of months or a year or two or so. Um, yeah, I feel like we're shaping up quite well. I am expecting some trophies this season. We are still looking like a, a force to be reckoned with. So there's no, um, there's no, there's no uh, doubts going into this league campaign. Over in the league, as you guys can see, we're on top of the table, level on points with uh, seven other sides, apparently. So, um, oh no yeah seven other sides apparently so yeah from uh, first place up to eighth every side's on four points so uh, everyone's won one game and drawn one it's a bit odd having this many sides on the, the same amount of points this early on some normally win both their games but yeah apparently <laughs> we win one and draw one um in terms of the champions league we're gonna be in group h and uh we have a Good group for once i'm quite surprised myself so we have barcelona monza and celtic in my opinion we are favorites barcelona are second monza they're obviously last on paper but uh, judging by the course of the way things have worked out in the groups that i've been in the side that's normally expected to be knocked out completely end up getting europa league football and the team that gets europa league football end up getting knocked out of europe altogether so i think celtic my prediction they're gonna be knocked out of europe altogether because why not why not and also we bought in perrin for 30 million so our net spend is in the green uh, we also got rid of chef chuck Bryn davis i feel like chef chuck he wouldn't have uh, developed in time uh, for me to use him we also had additional loan moves which i didn't report to you guys psv went in for Caraca for one year kiss has gone to sd huesca for one year on top of that yeah i'm not too sure how we're gonna do the next episode but um this season i've kind of felt like maybe we don't have to play games that are close by we can maybe just play liverpool barcelona let's say qpr and then jump all the way to celtic and that will be one complete episode while the rest of the games are played off camera so i may start uh formatting uh these videos a bit differently but in the next episode definitely expect this encounter liverpool barcelona uh qpr i feel like we should play that because it's uh the, the start of the efo cup we love the efo cup on this <laughs> in this on this channel um in terms of uh celtic that probably is a shot you know i didn't even mean to do that <laughs> liverpool barca qpr celtic i think that's the next episode but yeah guys if you made it this far please remember to smash that like button sub to the channel if you are new and also hit the notification bell so you're notified when i go live premiere video or upload one also i'd like to thank you guys for showing support for the channel there are people that have been showing support from season one up until season eight the people that have been showing support since fifa 22 man man you guys always catch me off off guard um with the comments as well i actually don't expect this much uh support and i didn't really expect this mu this many people to actually gravitate to the content i know there's a lot of people that have fifa in common and career mode in common and man united in common but there's a lot of channels you guys could be watching there's a lot of content you guys could be watching but you're watching mine also let me know how you feel how i've done so far in this campaign season eight is underway should i have uh, signed more players should i have not brought anyone in uh, should i have not have sold rashford or anthony was there a way to compromise with those two players and make it work with abbas and gallo or are you guys looking forward to the new dawn as we are pretty much he heading off into like the the dying the dying uh, segments of this fifa cycle as a uh, fc24 is around the corner i thought maybe maybe do something major different like majorly different for the for the last couple of seasons and then uh, see how the response is but if it's not good i'll take note <laughs> for the future but yeah um yeah leave uh, leave leave feedback for the content so whether you like the way the video was chopped up and edited leave comments on that um should i make the, the the videos a lot longer should i make it a bit quicker leave comments man leave comments always much appreciated but take care for now hope to see you in episode 94 peace